fundamental to the successful management of landscape pests is a sound understanding of the biology, behavior, and damage symptoms of the insects and mites that commonly infest our landscapes. Equally important is accurate pest identification and effective monitoring techniques to identify those insects as they appear. Jim Kalish and I are going to examine several ornamental beds right here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln's East Campus for the presence of insect infestations and damage. It is amazing to think about the number of species of aphids that infest trees and shrubs in the landscape, especially their presence is most uh, noticed in the springtime. When the trees and shrubs are growing, the uh, terminals are tender and succulent, and so you can have buildups of aphid populations very quickly. This is a case of a snowball uh, viburnum plant, and it is infested with uh, snowball aphids or viburnum aphids. Initially, if you walk by this plant, you may not notice that, but early on in the season, it's really important to be detecting the presence of these pests because should their populations reach very high and severe levels, they can detri be detrimental to the growth or perhaps the flowering of the plant. Fortunately, we have natural predators and natural enemies that usually take care of aphid populations in the springtime, and this is usually the case with snowball viburnum as well. The aphids are feeding on the terminals and their effect on the, by their feeding causes the leaves to curl and distort and completely cover them as they are feeding. So it may not be very easy to detect that they're there. You would look at these curled leaves and roll them back and as you can see there are a number of aphids, quite large and pale, feeding on the insides of the rolled up leaves. This may be mistaken for herbicide injury, but this is very common with viburnum in the springtime, especially with this particular uh, cultivar. The clear wing lilac borer is one of the most serious pests of lilac in Nebraska. Uh, the, actually, the borer is a caterpillar of a clear wing day flying moth. There's one generation a year. Uh, clear wing lilac borers overwinter as pupae within the cane of the, of the lilac. In the spring, oh, sometime between the beginning of May and mid-June, the borers emerge, adults lay their eggs on the canes, and starts another generation. The borers tunnel within the cambium layer and into the heartwood of the canes, actually interfering with translocation. The damage from a distance is characterized by early wilting and dieback of the infested canes. Examination of the lower 18 inches of the cane will reveal the presence of sawdust-like material as the borers exit the cane, and also holes that are oh, slightly smaller than the diameter of a pencil. There are a number of approaches that we can use to manage this damaging pest. The first are cultural, sanitation. By going in and routinely pruning the the lilac in an appropriate manner, that is taking out maybe a third of the larger canes, we make that plant less attractive. Also, if there are canes that are showing obvious signs of borer infestation, those can be removed immediately after flowering. A second approach to managing lilac borers is through the use of chemical insecticides. To do this effectively, accurate timing of the application is absolutely essential. One approach that we use to determine that time is the use of monitoring or pheromone traps. These traps, uh, as we see here, monitor the adult activity and tell us the appropriate time to apply the insecticide. Among the products that are available for control of lilac borer are the pyrethroids, products like bifenthrin or eight, which is permethrin. Uh, also, uh, some of the systemics like imidacloprid can be effective. I just love Ragosa roses because they are a native uh, species of rose. And there are many different kinds of cultivars of Ragosa. They have a long blooming period, usually pink flowers. They do have a problem though, even though they're native, they have a problem and that is with a pest which is a, called a flat-headed borer and the name of it is rose cane girdler or rose cane borer. This borer has an annual generation. Usually in the month of May, moving into June, the adult beetle is out. And it's kind of a golden uh, beetle called a uh, flat-headed borer beetle. 
and it will seek out roses which are in bloom at that time and it will deposit eggs at the lower portion of the canes. And then the boar itself hatches and it has this activity as it feeds of girdling. Think of like a spring, you know, in the helix kind of a shape. As it feeds, it makes a girdling, circular feeding cycle around the cane and therefore it disrupts the nutrients and the flow of moisture into the cane. And by the time we hit the, me the heat of midsummer, well, the canes are just withering up and drying and they will have to be pruned out in the autumn or next uh, late winter just to take care of the problem. When you are looking for rose cane girdler injury, look at the lower portions of the canes. There's usually a swelling and that's a response of the plant as it is defending itself against the feeding of the boar. So you'll have this large swelling at the bases of the canes. Those have the infestation and those will have to be pruned out later especially as a management tactic to remove the pest from the site and thereby cutting down the numbers that will potentially infest the next year. Rose cane girdler uh, insecticide control is usually not very profitable because at that particular time the, the roses are in bloom and there are a number of beneficial insects and pollinators that will be uh, visiting and foraging on the flowers. So the best management technique is to be pruning out those canes that are infested and that would be, the time for that would be in the autumn or during the winter time during the dormant season.